Hey, and welcome once again to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman, and today we jump into 1 Peter. Now, Peter, he, he's writing to believers that are scattered, and these are believers that are they're beginning to experience persecution. Uh, the cost of trusting in Jesus and the cost of living for Jesus, it is, it is increasing. It's not a an easy culture to follow Jesus. Rather, it's becoming a, an antagonistic culture toward those who are in Christ. And so today we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're just going to look at the, the beginning and the way Peter addresses this and the mindset that Peter brings to those who are reading his letter. And really, it's the mindset that we today can learn so much from as we think about whether culture loves us as Christians or not, whether they approve of us or not. But we have to remember what our faith is really about about. And so with that said, let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 3. And here's where the text begins. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, this is what he's done, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, let's just recognize a few key aspects of this. Uh, the Lord has caused us to be born again. We didn't uh, rebirth ourselves. We didn't earn it. No, the Lord has done it. This is the work of God in our lives. And he's done it through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Christ lived the perfect life, died the substitutionary death, was resurrected, and then through that, to those who believe in this truth, in Jesus, in his death and resurrection, we have been born again. But notice, we have been born again to a living hope. Just as Christ is the living Lord, we have a living hope. We have our hope set on the resurrected, the living Savior. And this is what our our what we've been born again to verse 4 to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled or undefiled and unfading kept in heaven for you this is what we await this is the hope that we have because Christ is risen and he rules and reigns in heaven you and I we are we are waiting for the inheritance that we're going to receive and where is that inheritance is it in the, our nine to five here at work? Uh, no. Is it in this earthly world? No. Our, our living hope, it is, a, it is a, a heavenly hope. Now, does this mean we just give up on this world? No. That's never the Christian perspective. We do as much earthly good as possible, but we do that knowing that we have a heavenly hope that's better than anything this world can offer. Uh, let's continue. Verse five. It says, speaking of us, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time or in the last time. So we are being guarded by God's power through faith. So God guards us. God, God keeps us wherever we need to be. This means that whatever we experience, this is God using it for our good, no matter how hard it might be. And our job is to trust him through faith. We are, we are guarded by God's power through faith. And the salvation that's going to be revealed at the last time, the, the very end when our ultimate expression of salvation is, is, it is displayed. Verse 6, in this you rejoice. Now we can say amen there. We, oh yes, we have such great hope. We rejoice in what's coming. But look at where the text turns. This is where I want us to focus our attention and see the significance of everything we've just seen about our living hope and the significance in our daily difficulties and in our trials and in our tribulations. He says, in this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. He says, we have something we're waiting for that is beyond comparing anything else to even that, even though we have that and we rejoice, we today, potentially, some of us, maybe not all of us, we've been grieved by various trials. Now, what are these kind of trials? For uh, Peter's audience, these trials were potentially persecution. They were family uh, disowning them. They were lack of economic or social opportunity. 
These were the kind of trials that a Christian would have experienced in the first century as they have claimed Christ. They have been baptized into Jesus. They have trusted in Jesus and his death and resurrection. And because of that, they have turned their back on Judaism. They've turned back their back on paganism and they are being ostracized and they're going through difficulties. This is some of what we experience today. Around the world, believers experience this in, in very uh, overwhelming and heavy ways. In America, this is subtle, but there certainly are places where the culture wants to call what is good is bad and what is bad good. Now, to be a Christian and say this is what God has said oftentimes will put you at odds with many in our world today. These are some of those trials. Maybe we can include health trials. Sometimes we go through health difficulties and they really are. They're trying and they're difficult. And sometimes the story doesn't end the way we want it to. What a, what a great trial. Relational trials, financial trials. The list goes on and on and on. It says, in this, our salvation, you rejoice. Though now, for a little while, th these aren't going to last forever. If necessary, if necessary. If you go through this, this is necessary. Well, why is it necessary? Look at verse 7. It says, So that the tested genuineness of your faith. So, so that the tested, tested genuineness of your faith. See, saying that you trust in Jesus and you follow Jesus, it's really easy if everyone else says that. It's really easy when life is going well. It's really easy when all you can do is say, thanks God for the wealth and thanks God for the, the, the healthy report card from my doctor. Thank you God that my family is doing fine and that there's no tension and there's no conflict. Thank you God for the promotion. You know what? It's really easy to say, oh yeah, God's good when life is good. But the genuineness of our faith is expressed when life is hard and we still can say, God is good. We can still say, I trust in Christ regardless. It says, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, and look how precious it is, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. You have gold that is tested by fire. It is refined, and our faith is worth even more. So, so that the tested genuineness of our faith, there's a clause there, and then it goes down the end of verse 7. It may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, when we talk about these trials that, that we go through for a little while, they're temporal, they're not eternal. They're, they're, if we go through them, that means they're necessary. God is using them in our life and they're necessary for what? So that we can show that our faith is genuine. That we don't have the kind of faith that when life gets hard, we say, I'm done. That we don't have the kind of faith that when we say, oh, the Lord says no to this activity that maybe I'm tempted to do, we say, I'm done with Jesus. No, we have the kind of faith that is proven to be genuine and it's proven by our trials. And the end result is that there is praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. At his return, it is, it is, we are able to stand and say, I've been waiting for you. I've been longing for you. I've been enduring. I have been, uh, I have been steadfast and, and persevering, even in difficulty. Even when life is falling apart, I have clung to you, Jesus. This is what Peter writes. This is where he begins his letter to the, the, the church as he writes to even us today. He says, listen, you have faith and your faith is proven genuine through your struggle so here's the ancient way for our modern day it's to maybe sit down and make a list of all the trials and all the difficulties you're going through and then to pray over each of them and say god i know that i'm being tested i know my faith is going to come out stronger i know that the result is like the dross being taken out of gold, my faith is going to become even more pure. And so thank the Lord for that. And then ask him, ask him that you would be guarded by the power of God through faith. Lord, guard me from doubt. Lord, guard me from a discouragement that I cannot overcome. Lord, guard me, keep me tight, keep me close to you. All oh, this is our ancient way for our modern day.